walking along at baseline and a paper gets accepted. I get this rush, this blip of happiness, and then I'm back to baseline by about lunchtime. A few days later, a paper might get rejected and that feels pretty awful. And I wait for that blip to end, but somehow I just can't stop thinking about it. And here's the craziest part. Even if another paper gets accepted the next day, well, that's nice, but somehow I can't get that pesky rejection out of my head. So what is going on here? Why does a failure seem to stick in our minds so much longer than a success? Well, together with my colleague, Hello there. That is, uh, we'll get to him in a moment. This is a <laughs> catalytic welcome to Agree or Disagree, the podcast, the controversial podcast that uh, engages in community and talks about different issues. I mumbled that. That's okay. Let me say that again. A controversial podcast that pushes you to think differently and connects with your community. We usually drop once a week. This is our second podcast that we did today. Uh, of course, you can find me on Facebook, Kevin Olenek. You can like, agree, or disagree the podcast on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter at K-E-V-O-L-E, SoundCloud.com, K-E-V-O-L-E, Spreaker.com, K-E-V-O-L-E. Subscribe on YouTube, Kevin Olenek. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about your thoughts. What do you spend most of your time thinking about? Is it love, money, sex, or anything else? Are you a person that thinks that your cup is half empty or half full? Do you have dreams, goals, or aspirations that you feel are generally impossible, but you still have them? Would you look at your life and say that you are happy? Or like the TED Talk Alison Ledred that you just heard at the beginning asks, do you get stuck in the negative, even in success, whatever that looks like for you, and not in the positive? And are there areas in your life that you would like to change or grow? I have a guest who is going to help us with that. So just for some sake here, before I introduce him, 2000, 2017 wasn't the greatest year for me, for those who know. Uh, I applied for over 200 radio jobs and have been rejected pretty much for all of them. So 2018 has been more about me focusing on what I can be better at. Um, if you get rejected a number of times, you have to change some things. And I did go to this man's seminar, Kieran Sweeney. He is an international speaker, business strategy expert, author, and a digital entrepreneur. His core areas of expertise are sales and influence, digital marketing, public speaking, publish, and mindset mastery in business and life. He has taught courses and spoken to audiences globally on money and mindset, sales and influence, public speaking, leadership, and self-empowerment. Kieran has a 30-year business career achieving over $50 million in sales. He has been a public speaker, speaker and course facilitator for 17 years, and a TEDx speaker as a two-time published author since 2012, co-publisher of Big Pitch Digital Magazine, has trained over 500,000 entrepreneurs, he owns a digital marketing publishing agency and a mobile app development company, and also <laughs> pretty well. Known for his highly engaging and interactive talks, Kieran can move an audience into action quickly through his engaging, charismatic, and witty style. Not only is he a dynamic keynote speaker, he also leads powerful three- and four-day breakthrough trainings. And I've been to some, so I know what he can do. Welcome. Hello. Hello. How are you? Thank you for welcoming. Thank you for the introduction. That that sounded a lot like me. Yeah. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> Anything I leave out there? That's a pretty. Well, you know, it's you know, it's it's fun to brag about yourself, and everybody has their bio and all that stuff. But you know what? I'm, I'm, I, I do my best to just come across and be as humble as I am because I, I'm not into the whole guru thing. Um, most of it's bullshit, and. You know, I'm I'm really into really helping people authentically and um, 
you know, I mean, you, you, you know me, you know, some, you know, you actually know one of my clients who's done very well in a very short period of time. So it, it's just, I like, I like to just, you know, I do this work cause I love what I do. And I've seen, I've seen the good, the bad and the ugly of the personal development and business success training industry. And it's, it's, you know, it's it, to me, it's just a, a racket of selling seminars to sell seminars to sell seminars. So you know, I just found a different way of doing it so that people, you know, they pay once and they make a lot of money. That's what people really want. So that's what I do. There we go. Okay. So I, I guess that was left out. <laughs> there, that's what we left out. That's why I allow that opening part. So there's, yes. So let's start with this because as you, you, there's a lot of money being made on this idea of thinking positively. Some of it rather healthily handled, and as you mentioned, some of it quite bullshit. Um, if I were to ask you, what does it mean to think positively, what would you tell me? Or what would tell us what you think about that? Well, it's managing your thoughts. So uh, everything, everything that comes through your conscious mind uh, in every second I mean, your brain is working at a phenomenal rate. There's, you know, 1,800 messages per second coming in. So there's a lot happening up there. So, so you know, you have the ability to just manage and control your thoughts. So positive thinking is just keeping yourself in a state of positiveness. And the state of positiveness starts with how you think. And so um, I can pretty much in 15 to 30 seconds assess somebody's state just by having a quick conversation with them. And, and, and you can do it too, Kevin. It's not, I'm not any better than you and you're not any better than me. We both have the same capabilities. It's just how we just choose to access them. So anybody listening to the podcast right now, I, you can just say to yourself right now, I am really good at thinking positive. I, I focus my thoughts on being positive and I can tell when someone else is in that state of mind as well. You just have to put yourself in that position mentally and consciously, and then you start to direct it. Because what happens is your conscious mind will uh, basically programs your subconscious mind. So, so the subconscious mind was programmed by you and other people, your influencers growing up, parents, teachers, um, religious authorities, whoever, friends, brothers, sisters, you know, everybody said you were rotten, you're bad, you were this or that, or they said you were great and empowering. All my four kids are uh, doing very well in life because uh, they're, they're, they're self-empowered. They grew up, you know, I didn't teach this to them. They just hung out with me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the, and I'm, you know, they've got their challenges. They've got, they do have unsupportive influences in their life, but I, I mentor and coach them on it. So when stuff comes up, I say, hey, dude, it's just it's up to you to accept that if you want to believe what that person just said that's that's your hmm. decision you have to give yourself permission to succeed in life and not accept uh other people's opinions because they don't count really so yeah i i wouldn't call myself a recovering people pleaser i would call myself preparing to recover to people please and what i mean by that is i i feel like at times I've kind of allowed people to do that and I am not, you know, not recovering from it. I'm not there at, Oh, I've recovered. I'm still working through getting to recovery stage. And I, it's, and I have to admit, admit that it's like a lot of like that has, I've had to work through and I, uh, to be more positive, or more have a better outlook on not that I have a negative outlook on life. I feel like I have a pretty positive outlook on life, but not allow bullshit to take over my life. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? That's exactly what I'm saying. All right. We're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. That took five minutes. Not bad. Yeah, you're in charge. I am in charge. Yeah. You're in charge. I mean, you're in charge of your thoughts. You're in charge of your feelings. You're in charge of who you're going to listen to. You're in charge of uh, what you do every day, your actions you take towards creating what you want. 
I mean, like your podcast is is it's a, you made a decision, and and you know you said in your intro that you were turned down from two two hundred jobs. Well, you know what? After about ten, I would have said do something else, but you're a persistent person. So you kept going and you kept going and you kept going. I'm going to believe, I believe I'm going to do this. And do that. But eventually after about a 200, you finally said, okay, it's a, there's definitely something not working out here. And, and, and really what's been happening is, is you're, you're, there, there's a greater power governing you right now and governing me and governing all of us. And so sometimes, you know, uh, what's that saying? I, I, it's been repeated by so many people. So many people say Einstein said it and, Socrates said, I don't know, but, you know, in, in a definition of insanity is you know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Well, you know, at, at some point we're going to have a breakthrough and say, this is not working in my favor. You train to become a radio personality, but the, the, the vehicle for you is this podcast. We know that now you've got over 10,000 listeners and growing, you'll probably have 100,000 by the end of the year because I'm going to make sure you do. And, <laughs> and you're going to just be an influencer and eventually you're going to have a million. So why would you sit in a radio station and have a small listenership when you have this global opportunity called the internet and iTunes and podcasts and all the other host sites you use? And, and, and now – you start to look back and say, holy moly, and, 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 and you, soon you're going to monetize this podcast. So, so this was somebody, – somebody was speaking to you a long time ago, but perhaps you weren't listening. And this is what I talk about in my book is like we have to be aware. We have to be open and, 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 and listen to the signs, listen to the sounds. You know, we're being, we're being given messages all the time. We're just not aware of it until we choose. So, so whoever's listening right now, choose to listen and look for messages that will guide you through life because it's absolutely fascinating what's happening. And, and you know, I could get into this. I mean, Napoleon Hill talked about this in Think and Grow Rich. Uh, just think of your 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 mind as a as a radio station, and there's a big antenna coming up from up through your body, through your head, and it's going way up 50 feet in the air. And there's all of these signals coming in and out, and those signals are thoughts. And 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 it think it, and, and if you just think that way, you're constantly sending and sending and receiving signals and information. Well, it's funny because I do think of myself as a radio station in many ways. I don't think of myself as an antenna, but I, you know, I kind of, we never plan to get into this, but I, I kind of look at the way that I design what I do during the day is, is kind of like a radio station. I present a topic on Facebook. You, you, you've seen it as well and, and Twitter. We're, we're here to talk about you. Why are we talking about me? But, uh, I've always kind of designed it that way. And it's just, I think, an evolution and, and a continued evolution of that. So, you're right. But I it started with an idea. It it did, it did. Now, what thought exactly? So, so agree or disagree was a thought. It was a yes. It just it started as tipping, and now we're doing this now. Right there, we go. What's the difference between hearing and listening? Well, you hear. You just hear. It's just a sound that goes through the ear drum, and vib the drum vibrates, and you hear it. Listening is paying attention to the spoken word, paying attention to the what's the message that's being conveyed, uh, and 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 tuning in and connecting with it. Whether it's being empathetic, whether it's being uh, analytical, or somebody's asking you for feedback, so are you really listening? I mean, I mean, I'll I'll sometimes I'll be sitting having a conversation with somebody, and my mind's somewhere else, so I'm not I'm not listening. Hmm. I mean, you, you know, uh, my partner in life, you know, <laughs> she'll say, are you listening to me? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I am, dear. Yes. Sorry. Because I've got a very creative mind and it wanders. Right. And 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 so I have to focus on keeping my mind straight. So I could be sitting, having a conversation with you, not really listening. I'm hearing you. But I'm not listening. So listening is really taking it in. And, and, and taking it in and processing it and getting the message and then, you know, entering into that back and forth dialogue. Right. So how have you seen that work, like, to get to where we have seen you now? 
How has that helped you? What, listening? Yeah. Can you give some examples of like, you know, I listened to something and then this worked. Well, my job is to listen because, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm a business strategist, mentor. Uh, people sit down with me. They want to help with their business. They want to help with their life, whatever it is. And I, I have to listen. So in order for me to be successful at what I do, I have to listen so that I can give them their feedback and the advice they're looking for to move them forward. So it, it's, a, it's a very important tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's true, I think. It's, but, you know, I mean, I think it's – how do I word this? Like practically, I think it's really hard – for lots, it's not hard. I'm going to disagree with myself in the middle of sentence. I'm going to disagree with myself. It actually is not hard to listen. It actually is really easy to listen, but it's hard to choose to listen because there's so much noise out there that there are times that we can get confused over which way is what. You, a great example of where I I see that is is is. Not only in the positive or the um, in in this industry, but in the food industry, where you have so many people with so many ideas presented on what food you should or should not eat, and what is healthy for you, and what is not, and how you'll live better, and how you won't, and if you take these three steps, then you're going to live until you're 103. But there's people that take those three steps and die at 43. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So I guess how do you break through what is important to listen to and what is important to ignore? Good question. I, I think you're going to listen to what resonates with your value system. Mm. So, you know, how you believe – what your belief system is, your value system. Uh, like I have a really good friend. We've been friends for 30 years and we met at university and we disagree on a lot of stuff. We have different political views, different, you know, humanistic views, different uh, philosophies on things. And, you know, we've gotten into some really good heated discussions. And but we're still friends. But <clears throat> what I choose to listen to resonates and agrees with my belief system and my value system. Hmm. So, you know, in, in my political slant in life is is more swinging left than it is right. I'm very I'm a capitalist, but I'm a, I'm a socialist, too. So I'm a kind of a socialist capitalist. So so I, I I have feelings and empathy for people who are misrepresented, underrepresented, misrepresented and, and all that. But at the same time, I love making money and I love growing businesses and I love the economy. Right. Mm -hmm. So but I think, you know, my value system is we got to look after each other. My belief system is, you know, not everyone's going to do it by themselves. A lot of people need a helping hand because, you know, something's happened to them in life and they're not able to do what they need to do. I think that's the, why I do what I do, because I really like helping people. Hmm. So I think what I'm hearing you say is is you've established your own personal value system, which has allowed you to listen clearly and what resonates within your value system is what you choose to listen to. True. Okay. Or if I if it doesn't agree with my value system, I'll still listen, um, but I might get into a, you know, a, a dialogue, a, a little bantering, but, you know, it's it's... But if I if I if I'm just completely not interested in listening, I'll just say, you know, I'm just not interested in listening to this. Hmm. Like, I'm not going to listen to gossip. Right. I'm not going to listen to uh, people talk negatively uh, uh, about other people. I haven't got time for it. It's like, you know, I, I, that's that's your stuff. And if you're talking negatively about another person, the, what, what I'm going to say, what I usually say to people is, you need to look at why that's bothering you, or why that person's interfering with your value system, because there's something about you that needs to change. You're right. It's not. It's not. It's not about them. And that's such a difficult place to get to, because I think it's it's easy. 
I, I wrote this recently, and it's true. There's there's that saying: if you're pointing for one finger pointed at you're pointing at, there's three fingers pointed back at you, and it's right. and it's it's this idea of like, and we certainly live in the social media world anyway, where I feel like we are in a position where we're pointing fingers at whatever political side that you stand on. It doesn't matter left or right. I think both sides are doing the same thing. They are pointing finger at the other person that they don't like or they don't agree with and saying, look at them and what they're doing wrong. But really there's a more of a self-reflective piece that has to happen of what am I doing wrong and what can I do to change what I'm doing wrong to make that right. That's a hard place to get to. It's actually not a hard place. It's an easy place, but it's a hard step to take. Well, if you just look, you, you know, you're going to you're going to you're going to al align with what you agree with and what what's important to you. But the other the other side of that is like there's a flip side to everything in life. Correct. The other side of that is maybe you need to look at that a little like if it doesn't agree with me, maybe I need to look at that a little deeper. Maybe like I was skeptical on stuff now that I firmly believe in. Hmm. You know, at, some, at one point in my life, all this spiritual stuff, this, what, who are these people? Like, what are you talking about, right? But now it's part of my life. I fully embrace it. So you know, sometimes we, you know, when, when we come up against some kind of resistance, often it's that resistance is something we need to look at. And, and we need to, why is that? Why am I resisting that? And it's, a lot of times, and, you know, the whole word skepticism all skepticism is, is I just don't fully understand. Right. Right. It's, it's like, uh, but I, part of you wants to, but part of you doesn't. And if you're willing to take this step, you can understand more. And it, maybe that doesn't align with your values or whatever, but it's still is something that you can respect, I guess, and, and learn from. And maybe yeah. things, yeah. You know, and things that you can apply. What are some of the things when you are talking to, coaching, mentoring people, what are some of the common things that you are hearing that people stumble with? Like, is it time management? Is it, like, feeling fearful that you can't do it? What, what are the, some of the stuff that, that is that roadblock to getting to that? I'm using air quotes. It's, 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 it's an easy answer, okay? It's a four-letter word. Go ahead. Is it – well, bullshit's an eight-letter word. No, the, 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 biggest, the biggest challenge that most people have – you know, I, just for people listening, I coach entrepreneurs, and I mentor them, and, and, and I, I, I give them strategies to succeed. And I, I know there's a lot of coaches out there. There's a lot of mentors out there, but they have not accomplished um, – sometimes not even accomplished what their clients want to accomplish. So, so it's important that whoever is mentoring you has already cut the path of where you want to go to. So, but the biggest obstacle I find with most of my clients is they hate selling. So the word sell hmm. has an immediate negative vibration on them. As an immediate negative vibration. And, and, and where does that come from? Well, it's easy. It's easy to answer that when you go back in life and look at all the stuff that's been sold to you and, and the hard sell. Like I had a guy doing a hard close on me today. I just I just said, you, you know, it's you know, I didn't come on to be hard sold. I came to understand what you're offering me. Hmm. That's all I'm here. I'm here to understand what you're offering me, because as soon as he went into the clo the close the, vi my, the, the, the negative vibration increased in me, and it started to make me feel uncomfortable. It started to piss me off. And I just said to him, I said, look, I'm not going to buy this right now. And I said, just by the fact that you've done that has really turned me off. You had me a long time ago. But as soon as you go into that freaking hard closing cell and all this stuff we're seeing on the internet, and if you don't buy today, you're going to die and all that shit, you know, I'm, I'm, so I'm so done with it. And so is everyone probably listening. I bet you there's a lot of people nodding their heads right now. Yes, yes I am. It's, it's a sales technique. It's a, it's a, it, it, and it's, it, what's the point in selling something when somebody doesn't really buy it or they're not ready to buy? So they, so they get you to buy an emotion. They get you to buy on fear of loss. 
but that's not sell to me that's not selling i want to sell people who get the understand the value that i can bring them to where they want to go hmm. and 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 it's like you so everybody listening if if you're in business every prospect you have has a desired reality and they also have a current reality. Their current reality is what's happening right now in their life and in their business. Their desired reality is their goals and visions and dreams and where they want to go. I just show you how I'm going to get you there. And whether you believe me or not is entirely up to you. But I've got lots of evidentiary proof that I, I'm doing it. I'm right. doing it for lots of people. Right. I've taken people from broke to multimillionaire. I've taken people, you know, I've got clients that have done way better than me. And, and, and it's just because they're just in a different industry, like real estate or something. Like if I want to go out and acquire all kinds of real estate and build a $150 million portfolio like one of my clients did, that, that's, that's great. But I hate real estate. Like I don't like it. I, it's not – it doesn't juice me up. So I love public speaking. I love training. I love writing. And, and so, so the whole purpose of, of this, Kevin, is, is, you know, when people get into the struggle of selling, it's because they think there's a certain way to sell, but there, there's a better way to sell. And I call it selling without selling. And it's just really, I call it edu, edu selling as well. So you, you just simply educate, provide people with enough information and, and the value you can bring to them and, and allow them to make a decision. And some will make the decision quickly. Some will take a month. Some may take three months or a year. But, you know, the lady that introduced us took an entire year before she decided to work with me. And now she's thriving. But that's the process she had to go through. And, and had, but had I ever done a hard close on her, I would have lost her in the beginning. Right. So, so, so to answer your question, sell. Selling is the biggest challenge that most people have in, 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 that I work with. And, and I help them get over it fairly quickly. But, and you know, it's funny because I think we, we do it. We sell. I mean, it doesn't look like for nine ninety nine you can get this fantastic rug. But we, every day that we're walking around Earth and we're presenting something to somebody, we are selling a portion of what we are. It's just whether or not someone thinks of that as value or, you know, it's being forced on, but there is a sense we're kind of already doing it. So it's really taking the next step to doing it in an educational, confident, but not asshole sort of way. Right. Yeah. I have a, I have a friend I, I, I noticed on Facebook and she's, furious with the MLM mindset right now that is just sending messages to her about join her brand, join the company. She's just like, shut up most of the time. And that's, you know, <laughs> and she posts it all the well, time. That's, that's the biggest thing with the MLM world is, is the, you know, they're, they're under pressure to sell because they've got to qualify and they've got all these systems and structures in place. And, you know, most MLM people are, are just, um, they're just not very good at it mm. and, and MLM companies don't train them how to sell properly. So, you know, um, they use shame and fear and all this stuff to sell, but there's a lot of good MLM companies out there. There's a lot of great products. In fact, I use a lot of MLM products. Um, I find the quality is, is a lot better in a lot of things and, and there's a lot of great companies out there and, and, but the ones, the ones that I resonate with are the ones that, you know what, they're not going to hound you all day. You know, it's like my friend Mary Ellen, she, she's with Nikan and she sells those magnets and all that stuff. And you know, the products work great. But she doesn't have to oversell anybody. She just does. I've taught her just do presentations to educate people. Some will, some won't. So what? And and the right people will come and and just. But you have to do it consistently. Right. 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 That's so, yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. It's, you just do your presentation, and you know, no, you know, you, you can't chase people, but you have to be doing a proper presentation. 
is is imperative and you just do your presentation you do it over and over again as many times as you can and and you know you'll 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 win i mean you'll win if you do it right and do it properly and consistently right what you know in terms of presentation let's get into that cuz you you did say that you love public speaking what is what is some of the habits bad habits good of, of public speaking that people need to work through. Like, for example, one of mine, when I did, when I public speak as an example, and I don't, you probably notice this when I talk to you, is I talk with my eyes closed. Like, are there other things that are really common that people need to be aware of? Like, the bad habits? Um, is the picture of other people naked? I think that that's a myth, actually, and I think that's ridiculous. I don't know why people have ever taught that. Do you teach that? Um <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing with public speaking is connection. Hmm. Connection to your audience and being able to establish that within the first 30 seconds to three minutes. You've got to connect with your audience. You have to engage them. And you have to enroll them. So those are the three things. So connection, engage, and enroll. So let's break it down. Connection <clears throat> is energy. It's mm -hmm. how you, you know, it's just like when your listeners read my book, Thoughts, which we'll talk about in a bit, yep. it's on Amazon, but it, it's, it's, it's how you connect with people that it, that's an energy. And, and, and when you're on stage <clears throat> and you're, you're doing a talk, it, it's not, it's no different from having a conversation like you and me sitting across the table having an eye to eye conversation. So when you think of an audience as just, a, you know, you're having a conversation with many versus just one. And, but as you're speaking to people, you, you look to somebody, you look them in the eye and then you look to the next person, you look them in the eye. And I mean, you see me speak, I move yeah. around the room with yeah. my eyes and I connect. And I, you know, I looked at you probably 30 times in the three days you were with me. So, you know, it's just because I want something to land. And a lot of times when I'm teaching and as I go through my courses, I get to know the room a little bit better and the people in the room. And, and I, I start to understand what their needs and wants and desires are. And as I'm teaching, I can actually focus on that person so that they hear it. And energetically, when that person, it lands with that person, it sends a vibrational energy throughout the entire room and everybody else gets it as well. So connection is number is, is, is fundamental. Uh, engagement is getting the whole audience engaged in, 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 in the vibration of, of, the, of the content of the seminar, of the workshop, of the teaching, and getting them engaged. And there's various techniques to do that. And then enrollment. Enrollment is getting them – everybody comes to a workshop because they want a specific outcome. So enrolling them is to immediately enroll them in what the – intended outcome of the seminar is. So if you came to take a, a sales course with me, my enrolling question right at the beginning is how many of you want to make a lot more sales? How many of you want to have a lot more happiness? How many want both, right? So, you know, the, the enrolling is connecting the audience right at the beginning to the intended outcome of the workshop. And that is how you, you become an effective speaker. Now, there's a lot of other things that, that, that happen in becoming uh, a powerful and effective public speaker. But, but the, those are the, the three key ones. Another one is really important is storytelling. Hmm. You know, people love stories. And so whether you're writing a book or doing a public talk, it, you must contain stories. Now, they can be stories about your life and experiences in related to the specific teaching part of that seminar or talk it could be other people's stories uh i tell i tell my own stories i tell stories of some of my mentors and stories of other people that i have had they've had a great breakthrough in life or whatever it is so but people relate to stories and and the more stories you utilize in in, in public speaking the more effective uh, you're going to be and uh yeah so that's Mm. Some good public speaking tips. There we go. And mentorship, which is, I think, a really important topic for a lot of people. I think it's hard. One of my lessons is it's really hard to do stuff alone. You do need some sort of support. 
And I've my studies have shown unscientifically that the people that have support in their back um, do better than the ones that go alone. Um, that's unscientific, but yet scientific at the same time. Uh, um, what what would you recommend in terms of being a good mentor, finding a mentor? Uh, what are some healthy steps in that? Good, good question. So whatever industry you're in, find a mentor in that industry who has already succeeded at whatever you're doing. So if you're in real estate, I said earlier, I, I hate real estate. I don't, I don't hate it. I just don't like doing it as a business, but I, I do like to own property and see it grow. And I've created a lot of uh, money by owning properties over my lifetime. But but you know, you you need to have a mentor who is um, successful in your industry, and you'd be surprised at how many elder people would are would, they just love helping young people. So find a mentor that's really been successful that you know who's already cut the path before you. Like if somebody wants to be a public speaker, I can help them become a public speaker very quickly because I've. I've become good at it. I've been all over the world now, and I've trained over 200 courses and been in front of 500,000 people. So I can teach it now. So when people want to learn to become a powerful and effective public speaker, I can really help them. Um, and then, uh, you know, we talked in the beginning about values. I mean, certainly the person has to have similar values to you. That that helps. But they genuinely want to help you. Hmm. They genuinely want to help you. And, you know, and, and some people, some people, like people pay me to have them mentor. Um, I do have some people I work with where I, I have a small equity stake in their business um, or a combination of both. I, I just brought on a client where it's a combination of both. So I get a monthly retainer plus um, uh, it's a success-driven equity. So the, if his business hits certain milestones, I get more and more equity. It's a good deal. So, so we're both vested in it. So, um, so you know, it, it's, it's, but it's, it's also like he and I have a vision this new client I have. We have a vision of, of helping thousands of people and, and w w with his work. He does brilliant work and, and he doesn't have the business acumen that I have, so he wants me to come in and help him. But I also have the skills and training that he has in certain areas and I also – we're both public speakers. So, so it's, a good, it's a good fit. So, so – and in fact, it's kind of like – He's my mentor. I'm his mentor. Hmm. So it's kind of a nice, it's a nice relationship. It's a co-relate. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but, but you know, it's just finding the first thing is to really align with someone who's really been successful at you, what you want to do, you know, and, 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 you know, do due diligence. I mean, there's people out there that make all kinds of claims, but you can say anything you want. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, there's there's people teaching social media that have a hundred followers, and I'm like, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, social media you can learn how to do it, um, and you can, you know, you can do it well, but you have to you have to really learn how to do it, and, and then of course have a good track record. So. Yeah. You yeah. know, the, this is my thing. If you claim to be a social media guru, you're out because there's no gurus in social media. It's just because it's an ever evolving landscape that keeps changing in some ways, but there's still some things that are very consistent. But, you know, it's that's, you know, yeah, gur guruing on that is, you know, but yeah, I, I would agree. Of course, credibility is, is really important to find. And, um, often hard to find because a lot of the times people don't brag. Um, we'll get to bragging in a second because I do think that that's an important topic and I want to talk about entrepreneurship also and then we'll get into your book. But you mentioned vision and I think that there's, there's two ways to look at this because 
when people hear, some hear vision, it's like this hallelujah moment where, oh, I visualize whatever um, in, in their life. But there's also the authentic, you have a real vision for your life kind of, can you talk about the power of vision and how it works in a, an authentic way? Even in an unhealthy way, it can work, I guess, right? Well, I mean, vision is, you know, uh, it's to see, right? Yeah. Uh, so it comes from the Latin videre, which is to see. And, you know, being able to see, and this is all in the book. But being able to see what you want and having a very clear, um, let's say, picture uh, of that to which you want and, and, and being able to connect with it with all your uh, sensory faculties, that's vision. I mean, a, a man or a woman has a vision of who they want to become or they have a vision of changing the world. You know, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King had a vision to to um, change the world and racism, and and that vision is still evolving today. Mm -hmm. And and you, you uh, uh, I mean, I, I could I could pick all kinds of famous people, Mother Teresa, and all kinds of people, but they had a vision, and 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 they didn't really worry about today or what was happening or get upset because that didn't work out or that person let them down or the money, the bank didn't come through or the money or the loan or whatever. And, but the vision is so powerful that they're just going to continue to find a way. Hmm. They're going to figure it out. And, 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 you know, my life has been nothing more than, you know, overcoming obstacles after obstacles after obstacles in pursuit of a big vision. And so, it, it, you're going to have obstacles. Um, uh, but if, if I can clearly see the end in mind to see the end result and, and I'm committed to it. And, that, and that's the other thing being committed, having a vision and being committed to a vision are very different things. Mm. So if, if your commitment is to have a million listeners and you're you, you're committed to that vision, then you're you're going to do it. But you have to stay committed, right? And and you know if 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 my vision is to impact a million lives in a very positive way, I, I have to be committed to that vision. And I'm already halfway. There we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, but I have other, you know, I have a, a bigger vision for myself personally and for my kids and stuff like that. So there's a lot, I have lots of little visions, hmm. but, but they're that, part of the bigger vision. But, and that's important because I think little vision leads to bigger vision. So, you know, my yeah. big vision, national million viewers, mirror listens podcast, but little vision is, you know, Digging into some real issues, interviewing people, continuing to practice my skills, all those sort of things, you know. But that that little stuff leads to the bigger stuff, you know. In in a right, so those little visions are important as much as your big vision because it takes you one step closer to where you want to be. I think. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, I'm going to toss and agree or disagree at you. I've never done this on the podcast before, but the theme of it is. So would you agree or disagree that entrepreneurs are born, not developed? I disagree. Why? Because I wasn't born an entrepreneur. You know, I was born in a blue collar working class family you know the old adage work work hard get a job get an education get a job i mean that's just the way i was conditioned growing up um i became an entrepreneur 
for the first time when I was 28. I didn't know what I was doing. I had a full-time job, but I found this product, and I got excited about it. And I wanted to bring it to market, and I did. And I did it on a part-time basis. But it was it was because I was excited about it. But But when I look back at what preceded that, a lot of what I was doing in life up until that time, I was always working. I, I've had a, I had a part-time job. I had a paper route when I was 11. I had a first part-time job when I was 14. I always had part-time jobs through high school and university. Uh, and then when I graduated and I traveled for a few years and I just came back and finally said, I better get a job. <laughs> and, and, and so I went and got a job. But what had happened was I had – I went to university and I ran for a student council position as an athletic director. And I won, the, I won that. It was an election. I won it and I was an athletic director. And then the next year I ran for president and I was elected as president. And then the following year I decided I wanted to produce a film on uh, athletics at my university. So I proposed it to the president, the vice president. Uh, the Board of Governors, uh, various uh, councils and, on campus. And I went out and sold this this vision of having this film to promote our university, and everybody bought into it, the varsity level and the intramural level. And I, I raised $15,000, and I got the film students in the film department to uh, put the, do, the, do the film, produce it and edit it, and do all the production, and we ended up winning three awards. Wow. So – yeah, I mean, and so I look, I, and then I, I was, uh, I was a volunteer on a, a, a international education program called Canada World Youth, and I went and worked in the developing world, and then I was a member of Up with People for years and musical group, ran around, traveled around the world doing community work and singing and dancing in a show, and I couldn't even sing or dance, but somehow I figured that out, and and I was then you know I was in, it was that took me to China, and I was performed in the halftime uh, show of the Super Bowl. And, and, and so when I look at all of that stuff, you know, when you, when you, when you kind of look at the, what's the common denominator in all that? Well, I was, I was a leader. I was an initiator. I made things happen. I figured it out. And that's entrepreneurialism. But, so, but to me, that was the development of, 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 of making me into an entrepreneur. So, so I don't think you're born an entrepreneur. I mean, some I don't think there's, a, there's any right or wrong answer to this, Kevin. I think for me, I'm just saying I disagree because my own experience is I had to develop to be an entrepreneur. Um, but some people are just, yeah, they're good at it. Like I remember kids growing up who were just, you know, they had the Kool-Aid stand and they had this and they're like, oh, go do this. I mean my son, you know, he, he obviously was being conditioned by me, but when he was in school, he would go to the store, he'd buy a case of uh, sodas, go to school, and sell them. Wow. There we go. <laughs> and there. Because he figured out he could make a lot of money. Yeah. So, you know, so he just figured it out. And so, you know, um, yeah, so for me, it's like uh, – you know, you're, I think you're developed. I mean, look, look. I mean, would you call yourself an entrepreneur? Uh, yes, but you know, I haven't made any money doing what I doing what I'm loving to do. But I still, I but guess, but I will exactly. It's a hard. The hard part to that too is is there's I think in my world anyway, and as Denzel Washington says, change your world. It's. And it's not a bad thing, because you're right. There's no right or wrong answer to it, but there's always been an encouragement that you have to work. Like, you have to work for someone else. That is how you pay your bills. If you're not working for someone else, you're not paying bills. And how is that working? And, you know, so it's that fear of taking that bigger risk, I think, I, I see that is really, that's tough for some people. Well, it's because they're not trained to be entrepreneurs. We don't educate people to be entrepreneurs. I mean, you're, the entire school curriculum is designed to put you into an employment economy. Um, and the reason the system is set up that way is we need that employment economy because those people pay the taxes. The middle class pays most of the taxes. The lower class doesn't pay a lot of taxes. And the upper class 
you know, spend a lot of time paying other people to reduce their taxes. So, so you know, most of the taxes are paid by the middle class, and that middle class is the employment economy. So the employment economy is what drives this. But what's happening is in 20 years from now, if we don't start training our young people to be entrepreneurs, that there's going to be a big problem. Hmm. Because automation and technology are going to replace jobs. It's all. It's it, if you don't if an, if you don't see it, it's it, the writing's on the wall. Twenty years from now, half the jobs that exist today won't exist. There will be new jobs, but we're going to have a very different a type of economy, and it's going to be an entrepreneurial driven economy. You and I are going to be trading services with other entrepreneurs. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. And, 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 and it's so easy to be an entrepreneur. It is not difficult as long as you have a product or service that you believe can impact thousands of lives in a positive way. Then you just got to get over yourself and, and just get out there and learn how to promote it. Yeah. And, and that's what I do. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I want to take Trudeau by the, the shoulders one day and say, listen, you and I together – we can change this country and make it the greatest country in the world because I know we can do it because he – I mean the, the great thing that he's doing right now is, is – is, you know, whether it's his initiative or Harper's, I can't remember. But the, the, you know, they're, they're, they're giving out almost $200 million in training grants right now, and, uh, and you know, our – my clients get – grants from the government to take my courses. I charge $15,000 for my program, but the government reimburses my clients $10,000. That's good. That's very good. Yeah, yeah, I don't know I don't know who that is. I think there's, there's some people who want to shake sh uh, the, the shoulders of Trudeau which is for so many different reasons, but that's another podcast for another time. <laughs> But yeah, well, you know, I, I'd shake, I, you know, I'd shake his shoulders too uh, with the pipeline. And uh, okay, 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 come on, what do we need a pipeline for? Really? Come on, twenty years from now, we're not going to need that much oil. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's. My friends just, in Alberta are just shaking their fists at you. You realize that, right? <laughs> fine. Then take it. Build a build a pipeline that goes up around the border of of like the issue is. Why does it have to come through the ocean inlet? That's the issue. Hmm. So take it somewhere else where if there's an accident, it's not going to ruin the ocean. That's the issue. Yes, there's there's so much on that too. But yeah. take it take it somewhere else and build another um, um, harbor somewhere. I mean, we've got this massive coastline, and 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 you know, find a way to load oil onto ships. That doesn't impact the environment. You know, there's a task for you, right? There we go. <laughs> I'm actually planning a debate on this topic. I'm bringing going to bring in two different perspectives. We're going to have a hopefully to have a legal debate from both sides on this. Well, I, I love the fact that Alberta has banned the import of British Columbia wines. So that is more for us to drink. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, that's a whole other. Yeah. That that wouldn't have been my decision. The funny thing is most of those wineries are fu funded by Alberta money. They're exactly. Money. That's the problem. They're, and most of them are actually pro pipeline. Wasn't the best one. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. By the way, no, anyway. no wine has been drinking during this podcast on my end. Anyway, I don't know what you're on. No, I'm just drinking water and I had a coffee just to get my edge up a bit. Yeah compete with you <laughs> yes there we go there we go tell us about your book so thoughts is a uh it's a very powerful book on the power of thought and how thoughts are energy and how your thoughts impact your feelings and emotions which determine the actions and ultimately the results you get in your life so in the book i teach you and i i know a lot of somebody actually wrote a really good review about that this book the other day they're saying that you know, if you if you read a lot of books in this space, like mindset and mind power and stuff like that, and positive think or whatever, you know, this is just they said it was it's worth reading because it presents a different perspective and a different view on that subject. So, you know, it's uh, thoughts, the simple yet powerful method to create more money, better relationships, and true happiness. Now, you know, 
why did I, that subtitle is because those are the three things most people want in life. They right. want more money. They want better relationships. They want true happiness. And, and if they don't want more money, that's fine too. Maybe they want a more spiritual experience while they're on this planet. Whatever it is, you can achieve it uh, by uh, using the techniques uh, in this book. It's a quick read. It's 100 pages, mm-hmm. and uh, it's, uh, it's on Amazon. And uh, also, um, you know, Kevin Harrington was one of the original sharks on the hit TV show, The Shark Tank. He also was the inventor of the uh, infomercial and one of the pioneers of the as seen on TV. He he loved the book and he wrote uh, he, he wrote a little endorsement saying, if you ever feel that you could be living your life with more abundance and happiness, do yourself a favor and buy this book because your thoughts have the power to create your desired reality. You know, I talk to Kevin frequently and, and he – you know, he's just – he's an amazing example of how thoughts – if you have a vision, an idea – I mean the whole reason he started the infomercial uh, that he created, he was sitting at tea, uh, in, in his house one night, and this was before he had, had a major success. He had some success, and he was sitting there watching TV, and, and the, the show ended, and all these color bars came up. Uh, that usually happened between two and six in the morning. And and so he called the the TV company and he goes, you know, I've never really thought about this, but, you know, why do we have these color bars come up between two and six? And he goes, well, the guy said, well, because nobody's really watching. And he goes, well, I was. Mm. And if I was, I'll bet there's another million people out there that may be up at night. And there's people that, you know, they can't sleep. They have insomnia, whatever. And so he had this vision, let's use that time, which he was able to buy extremely cheap because nobody cared about it, and they started promoting products. And what happened? Created a $5 billion industry. So, so this and, – and now you know, he, he um, goes around speaking all over the world because the Shark Tank's being – uh, the reruns are being released all over the world, so he's in high demand now, and he he commands a hundred thousand dollars for a one hour talk. So, you know, he's he's just got the mindset, and and he wasn't doing this hundred thousand dollar talks two years ago. You know, he and I were sitting around talking one day, we we're having a cigar, and we were just talking, and he said, you know, what do you think I can get if I was a public speaker like you? And I said, well. I said, you know, I'll get 10 grand a talk, but a guy like you ought to be able to get 30. But you know what, Kevin? If you really leverage your Shark Tank success and go into countries where it's just starting to show, because the the reruns were basically the beginning and when he was on the show, and I said, you know, you, you could create quite a following. Well, he's he's turned that into a multi million dollar business now. So you know, it's just it's just how you think. So whatever you have, if you're just starting out, you know, and you've got a great product or service that you believe can be impact lives in a positive way, then learn how to sell, learn how to market it, learn how to brand yourself and just do it. I mean, look at the millennials today. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're just figuring it out. Yeah. Like branding today is easy. Yeah, because it, no, it's not because it's because I think we naturally do it. It's it's yeah. not hard. It's we naturally it's just ingrained in us. Yeah. You know. Social media has given us the, the 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 vehicle to just be able to brand ourselves and promote it. I mean, I'm I'm getting downloads every day on this book because of social media. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's true. That's great. It's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything else we should talk about before we? You want to? Get off your chest? No, I got nothing on my chest. Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, I, I'm, look, I'm, I'm just, if, if you, if you, if you're, if you're totally believe that you've got something great to bring to this world, I'm just going to encourage people to go out and do it. And like, I'm glad to see you doing what you're doing and really stepping it up and, and, uh, you know, making it happen. And he, he, here's something I, I want to say to people too. I guess I thought of this a couple of times. You know, I listen to people and how they talk and, and the words they use. And what I'm going to suggest to people is use these words. I am in the process of dot, dot, dot. 
So I'm in the process of creating the, uh, uh, you know, a number one selling book. I am in the process of creating uh, a business that's going to do five million in revenue. I'm in the process of, of, of building a podcast that's going to reach a million listeners and uh, monetize to $100,000 a month. So because all you're doing is you're, you're every, every word you speak is confirming to the universe what you want. Hmm. And so if, if you say, I don't make enough money, the universe will say thank you and we'll just keep you there. But if you say I'm in the process of ma- earning millions of dollars, you're going to be sending a completely different message and vibration out to the universe. The, the biggest thing I want to leave with people this, and it, this, this may be a stretch for some people to believe, but every thought that comes out of your mind has an energetic imprint on, on a universal plane, on the ether, and, and it, it's going to come back to you. So, you know, the Everyone's heard of karma. Well, karma is so real. Hmm. And, and, and so every action you take, everything you do, everything you do in life is going to have a, a, a result. It's going to bring back to you the exact energy that you put out. So really monitor your thoughts, monitor your actions, and, and just, just believe that you're going to be successful, and you will. It's the ones who doubt and don't and pitter around and worry and whine and complain and what they just go back Back. yeah all right fair enough when how do we follow you fair enough fair enough (laughs) my favorite line how do we follow you yeah so uh well you follow me i'm on you know instagram i'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn. It's just everything is Kieron Sweeney, K I E R O N S W E E N E Y. And then, and except on Facebook, it's Sweeney.Kieron. And then uh, the book Thoughts is on Amazon. Just just type in Thoughts and my name, Kieron Sweeney, and uh, it'll come up. And happy reading. And also, there's a link in the, because it's a digital book. There's a link to another book that's uh, it's a free download. So go ahead and grab that. It's called Life's Golden Buckets, oh. and it teaches you how to create wealth. With doesn't matter how much money you earn, there's a certain way of managing money that will help you bring your life into financial balance. And if you just stick with it, I did a TED talk on this as well. Uh, and and if you just stick with it, it'll work for you. All right. So download that. For me, Facebook, Kevin Olenek, Twitter, at K-E-V-O-L-E, SoundCloud.com, K-E-V-O-L-E, Speaker.com, K-E-V-O-L-E. Subscribe on YouTube as well, Kevin Olenek. There'll be more channels and things to come. There's also Patreon, K-E-V-O-L-E, Instagram. Just Google K-E-V-O-L-E. You'll find it. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. And um, it was great having, great conversation. And Enjoyed it. Great. Thanks, everyone else, for listening. Again, this is Agree or Disagree, the podcast, and we will talk to you all soon. Bye for now. Do you want to boo-boo? Do you want to do your beep bop? <laughs> <laughs>